If I see a man in a dress, I think he's a crackhead, period. Wow, there is a lot going on. Can I just say, I'm, I'm really not having like the best day. Like it's fucking 1 p.m. and the sun is going down. My sock broke. This will be one for the foot fetish vlogs. I do have a iced latte, a lot of milk for everyone who gives me shit for that. Sip for you. Oh, and I got my nails done. As you can see by the title of this video, we're gonna be talking about uh, we're gonna be talking about Candace Owens. Got the bro. Who the fuck is Candace Owens? Candace Owens is a far right political commentator who has attracted a very loyal audience for her ability to uh, tell the truth about the Democrats, the left, the gays. She's a fierce critic of the Black Lives Matter movement. She hates modern day feminism. She's a registered member of the NRA, the National Rifle Association. She has made false claims that the NRA started as a civil rights organization. She opposes welfare programs. She thinks abortion is murder. My thoughts are that murder is not a re reproductive right. Right, so yeah. this is, murder is not healthcare. I know what abortion smells like. She thought the hashtag Me Too movement was, and I quote, stupid. But she wasn't always like this. Candace Owens used to write for a left-wing anti-Trump blog where she wrote that Republicans were that shit crazy and she hoped they would die peacefully so we could make much needed social progress. Period. So what the fuck happened? Well. In 2016, Candace Owens became the target of online harassment when she was attempting to build her own website. Her website was supposed to be a place where online bullies were exposed, but basically everyone involved in the online anti-harassment debate on the progressive and conservative sides hated the idea because they thought it would just end up fueling more doxing and public harassment online. Ironically, some of these people began doxing and harassing Candace, and then Candace blamed progressives for what was happening to her. Then. High-profile Trump supporters like uh, Milo Yiannopoulos and anti-feminist conspiracy theorist Mike Cernovich showed public support for Candace while she was being harassed. And then Candace Owens became conservative overnight. In the four years since that happened, Candace Owens has become a spokesperson for many people on the right. She's gained millions of followers across her social media platforms. This week, we amused ourselves with my favorite form of bigotry, homophobia. Miss Candace Owens has been trending across basically every social platform for her crusade against men in dresses. It all started when she quote tweeted a picture of Harry Styles' Vogue cover where, might I add, he looks so fucking hot. And she said this. There is no society that can survive without strong men. The East knows this. In the West, the steady feminization of our men at the same time that Marxism is being taught to our children is not a coincidence. It is an outright attack. The tweet obviously caused a lot of controversy and any press is good press, so she followed it up with another string of homophobic and misogynistic tweets and followed those up with an eight minute blockbuster short film on Instagram where she calls men in dresses a perversion. And it is perverted to me. Naturally, I have a few things to say, but some people are gonna see the title of this video and they're gonna see Candace's name and they're gonna be like, why are you even giving her more attention? My answer is this. Candace Owens has an enormous platform, much bigger than mine, by the way, that she is spreading what are, in my opinion, homophobic, transphobic, misogynistic, and generally hateful ideas to. At the time I was writing this video, her Bring Back Manly Men Instagram video already had over three and a half million views. As a feminine gay guy, I want to contribute my opinion to the explosive conversation she started, and I think that's as much justification as I need for making this video. But I also have a platform. Smaller than hers, sure, but I'm hoping that the next time someone who's still on the fence about how they feel about all of this searches her name or searches this issue, maybe they'll see my video and choose the less hateful position. What we're gonna do now is uh, respond to Miss Candace Owens' video. But here's the thing. We're not gonna be hateful. We're not gonna call her names. We're not gonna disparage her looks. I want to engage with her ideas. I want to respond to them and tell you why I think she's wrong in a way that I hope you will find reasonable. Now, a quick warning, this gets really homophobic and transphobic and misogynistic and ableist. So, prepare yourself. All right, guys. 
bring back manly men. Who would have thought that that would have caused an absolute firestorm? I mean, me. Of course, I'm a left because the left hates anything normal. Basically, if there is anything that looks remotely normal, the left sees it and they want to tear it down. They just cannot stand the idea that things are functioning and things are working and things are normal. Like normal for who? Functioning for who? Because if we're clinging to what's normal or functioning, like the normal and functioning gender roles of 50 years ago wouldn't have allowed you, Candace Owens, to have the career that you have. This was not an attack on Harry Styles. He happened to be the man in the dress, but really it was more of an attack on Vogue and the culture in general that is trying to shove this down our throats, right? This turning women into men and turning men into women has been the, the move on the left as of late. Can I just say, a man wearing a dress isn't turning a man into a woman. But if that's the logic we're using, then you've turned yourself into a man a number of times, Candace, by wearing suits. Right, M women should wanna go to work. You don't need a man, shave your head, dye it pink, make yourself ugly, right? Cause that's feminism and that's power and that sticks it to the patriarchy. I, I love this ongoing idea that feminists are ugly or they're making themselves unattractive. Like, you may not think Harry Styles is attractive, but you'd be hard pressed to argue that a number of other prominent feminist figures are not radiant models of beauty. Quite frankly, I do not find men in dresses to be attractive. Candace, that's fine. You don't need to find men in dresses attractive. No one is asking you to, but surely that's not why you're making this video, right? There are a lot of things that I don't find attractive, straight people being one of them, but I don't just start online crusades against them. I mean, maybe I do, but that's, that's not the point. Let's be real. This isn't about you not finding Harry Styles attractive. It's about you using his Vogue cover as a chance to profit off of your homophobia. It is not lost on me that you just released a book that you've been promoting and you've now trended multiple times this week across social media as a result of this Harry Styles and address meltdown. And from one attention obsessed person to another, I feel you, but just be honest about your intentions. Women do not find men in dresses to be attractive. Why are you centering this around what people find attractive? What if I berated you, Candace, for something you wore because men didn't find it attractive? Harry Styles is not claiming that he wore a dress because he wanted people to be attracted to him. Just because I happen to be very attracted to Harry Styles in a dress does not mean that was his intention. He wore a dress because he wanted to, and that is fine. When is the last time Hollywood has ever promoted anything good or anything functional? Right? Hollywood is the conduit to all bad ideas. Anything that they are glorifying in Hollywood, you can guarantee you is going to ruin your life. I mean, that is kind of true. Hollywood glorified Channing Tatum and personally realizing that he was never going to be my shining trophy of a man has ruined my life multiple times. So they want you to think that they're these little demigods. So suddenly Harry Styles was on a dress and that's just what everybody should be doing. You know, Candace, while I do personally think that all men should be wearing dresses, I really don't think that's what Vogue is trying to say with this cover. They're just working on contributing to a more socially acceptable environment for the men who do want to wear dresses. And it was working until you decided to uh, wage war against it. Quite frankly, you know, from people who don't play the Hollywood game and live in the hills, if I see a man in a dress, I think he's a crackhead, period, right? If you see that stuff, if you live in the projects, if you live on the streets and you see somebody wearing, a man wearing a dress, you assume that they have mental issues. Now, besides this being obviously misogynistic and homophobic and transphobic, I actually want to unpack what she's saying. Oh, oh my God. That is so fucking embarrassing. Oh my God. Okay, well, I'm, hold on. I'm gonna go change my shirt. Back to what I was saying. I live in New York City and what I think Candace is talking about is that it's true that sometimes you may be walking on the street and you see someone who might appear to be a man in a dress or a wig or someone who looks generally androgynous and like they're having a hard time or they may be homeless. But Candace, the reason that these people who might be feminine gay men or trans women or non-binary people end up on the streets in this position is in part because of the exact bigotry that you're spewing to three million people. LGBTQ people, especially trans people of color, are disproportionately likely to experience homelessness or struggle with addiction, not because they're predisposed to it, but because they are so often the recipients of discrimination that leave them without shelter or food 
or education or access to jobs. So instead of further judging the people who already live at so many intersections of discrimination and lack of privilege, maybe consider why the people you think are men in dresses end up living the lives that they do and how you might be contributing to it. Candace. I'm, uh, I'm switching to water because I've had so much caffeine today that it's just, it, <laughs> We're reaching a point. I would never allow my kids near a man that's wearing a dress. That's my personal opinion. You can call that however, however you want to call that. I'll call it homophobic and I feel sorry for your children. It's not normal. It's completely not normal, uh, you know, for, for to, to feminize men and to keep pretending that this is progressive. It's not progressive. I said what I meant. There is no society that can survive without strong men. Okay, once again, First of all, not all men want to be feminine, right? And second of all, who the fuck said feminine men are weak? It's the misogyny for me. Men, the role of men is to defend, it's the role to protect. What kind of 1950s shit are you talking about right now? Literally, like what, what's going on? All of you men who are sending pictures of you in a dress and saying, oh, I'm still a man or I'm still a manly man. I am not calling on you when there's a world war. Candace, you are not calling on anyone when there's a world war. You're a right-wing sensationalist internet pundit, not a fucking attorney general. Let me give you a couple of forms of perversion that people in Hollywood like to promote, aside from men wearing dresses, which I believe to be a perversion. It is perverted to me. Candace, do you, do you know what perverted means? The dictionary definition of perverted is characterized by sexually abnormal and unacceptable practices or tendencies. So for you to call this Vogue cover perverted is not only ridiculous, literally, is there anything sexual about this Vogue cover? Like there are a lot of other previous Vogue covers that have been objectively more sexual in nature that you seem to have been fine with. So what now? So, no, I'm saying what now? A, a perversion is that Hollywood people, Hollywood elitists, also a bunch of women telling, oh, abortion's the best thing ever. What? <laughs> Nothing prepared me for what I saw on the screen. First of all, how did we transition from Harry Styles wearing a dress to abortion? Second of all, I don't think anyone has ever said abortion is the best thing ever. Like, I don't think anyone's ever even thought that. The purpose of a lot of prominent and powerful celebrities talking about their own abortions is to destigmatize something, abortion, that lots of people have experienced and will continue to experience. I cannot believe I'm talking about this in the same video that was supposed to be focused on Harry Styles wearing a dress, but terminating a pregnancy for any reason is something that's just always been a thing for some people who become pregnant. No one is glorifying abortion, but what we are saying is that if you happen to need one at some point for any reason, it's not something to be ashamed about. Miley Cyrus, abortion, eh, ah, ah, right? That's her thing, abortion cake. That is a perversion, right? Women should, should think about how do we protect our children? How do we raise children? Not how do we rip them out of our bodies and glorify that. They glorify killing babies. Uh, okay. Let men be masculine. Girl, men can be masculine. No one ever said that they couldn't be masculine. You're sitting here glorifying people like Cardi B who are telling you it's, it's to put your vaginas on the floor. What? <laughs> Is that what Cardi B was saying in WAP? I have to read these lyrics again because I, I didn't think she was saying put your... I, what? And Hollywood says, yay, let's make that viral. Harry Styles, yay, in a dress, let's make that viral. Miley Cyrus ripping live human beings out of your vagina, yay. So powerful, let's make it viral. You are all disgusting. Okay, <laughs> water break. This is a lot, this is a lot, I need a break. <laughs> all of you little kids who are too young to understand that they are putting you on a path that is going to ruin your life. I don't want to sound like a broken record with this, but I just want to say to you, Candace Owens, as a flamboyant little gay boy who grew up in a town where I had no positive gay feminine men to look up to, the limited representation that I did see of people who looked like me and were happy in Hollywood media really meant a lot to me as a kid and may be one of the few reasons that I'm here. I hate this idea that diverse representation in movies and media is corrupting our children because the truth is for a lot of us, it saved us. There are a lot of young androgynous people who are gonna see Harry Styles on the cover of Vogue wearing a dress looking as 
beautiful as he does. And that's gonna mean a lot to them, Candace. I'm sorry it didn't mean a lot to you, but literally just move on because clearly this moment is not about you. Examine the lives of the people. You may think they have money. Examine their personal lives of those celebrities that you follow. Actually go examine their personal lives and tell me if that's a life that you think you aspire to. Ask yourself a question, do you think that person is happy? For anyone following me, I just wanna let you know, you heard it here first. Unfashionable though it is, I am happy. And if I couldn't have my nails and my makeup and all the stuff that makes me me, I would be a lot less happy, so. For everyone who keeps throwing me all of these rockers who wore dresses, okay, they were also all on drugs. Right? Look at Kurt Cobain uh, wearing this dress, Candace. Oh, he looked like a person that was very stable and uh, mentally healthy. Let me go try to live my life like that. You know, this idea that androgynous people have mental health issues, like, can we talk about the mental health of all the people that feel like they can't be themselves and who bully themselves because of the homophobia and transphobia and bigotry that people like you are spewing? Candace, can we talk about their mental health? Can we talk about my mental health before I was able to come out of the closet? closet and express myself because I can tell you that my mental health is a whole lot better now than it used to be and a big part of that is because I feel the freedom to live and express myself exactly how I want to. Period. All of that aside, can we just talk about the ableism in shaming people who have struggled with mental health or addiction or any of those issues? Candace Owens, I hope you never struggle with any form of mental illness. Oh, isn't that cute? You can see my antidepressants. I hope you never struggle with any form of mental illness because the way that you're talking about people who have, you're gonna really give yourself a hard time. Everything the left does and touches, everything that these Holly weirdos promote is about destroying basic values that work. A nuclear family, a yin and a yang in the household, having a feminine and, and a masculine figure who raise solid kids with good values. Literally, the longer this video goes on, the more I feel myself melting into 1950. For all of you guys that are running around saying, oh, she's doing this for attention, I wasn't the person that put on a, a dress and went on the cover of Vogue. Um, that would be for attention. Candace Owens, I ask you this. How could Harry Styles have worn a dress on the cover or in real life in a way that you wouldn't think was for attention? Because Harry Styles hardly even promoted his Vogue cover. Like, I think he tweeted about it once just to announce that he was on the cover of Vogue, which is kind of a big deal. As far as I can tell, it really wasn't about attention for him. I think for you, anything that exists outside of what you perceive to be acceptable gender norms is attention seeking. Because at the core of these people who you think are subversive and progressive and forward is a desperate need for attention and they can never do enough to get that attention. I mean, I can only speak for myself on this, but this is actually true. Everything I do is for attention, but I don't think the same can be said for Harry Styles. So leave him out of this. I am happily, happily married got a kid on the way that should be here in eight weeks um i don't find the need to put my vagina on the ground to show people how empowered i am what <laughs> what i don't need my husband to be in a dress shutting shutting down the street because he's comfortable in his own skin good for you i need my husband shutting down the street in a dress to show me that he's comfortable in his skin but I'm glad you don't. I think what people are really upset about is that conservatives are not backing down to these Holly weirdos anymore. No, Candace, you're wrong, actually. What people are upset about is that 40% of homeless youth identify as LGBTQ. What people are upset about is the disgracefully high number of trans women who are murdered in the United States and around the world every year as a result of transphobic and homophobic bigotry. What people are upset about is people like you, Candace, who continue to profit off of the suffering of gender expansive people with no regard for whose lives you may be harming in the process. That is what people are upset about. And I'm so tired of society's attack on masculinity. Masculinity is sexy. Swing an axe, take care of your family, fish, hunt, shoot, do whatever it is that you do. Candace, I'm happy that you like a man who will swing an axe, but personally, if the man I'm with ever chops down a tree, there will be issues. Uh, since the beginning of humanity, we've had men protecting and defending, we've had women nurturing, and um, Hollywood, you guys are a bunch of clowns. Nobody cares, genuinely, nobody cares what you think. I mean, clearly you care, Candace. so. Wow, that was a lot. Um, <laughs> if you made it this far, um, here's a hug. 
Candace Owens, if you see this, I'm not trying to shit on you as you have shit on so many other people. I genuinely want people with huge platforms or not to just start treating people better. We have a lot of problems in the world right now. Men in dresses are not one of them. You know, I also think there's something to be said for the amount of backlash that Harry Styles, a white man, got for wearing a dress. I love Harry Styles, wow. <laughs> What a man. But let's do some service to the history of the queer community by acknowledging the fact that Harry Styles' Vogue cover probably couldn't have happened if it weren't for the many trans and queer people of color who paved the way for the public to understand and sometimes accept, sometimes not accept, androgyny as an art form and as a fashion expression. That is all. Show your gender expansive friends that you love them please, in whatever way that you can, be nice to people. Don't automatically attack things you don't understand. I love you. See you next time.